Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial. So today what I'm going to be showing you is how you can pass a function through local storage. So this is an interesting problem because you can only store string data in local storage. So your first thought might be to do the same as you would for an array or an object, which is to call JSON stringify passing in the function. And then when you want to convert it from string back to a function again, use the json.pass method. So I'll pass in an array here and an object. So you can see these for comparison. So if we take a look at the output for this code, you'll see that it worked for the array, also for the object, but JSON stringify ignores functions. So we ended up with undefined. So this is problematic for two reasons. The first one is that you can't use json.stringify to stringify the function. And the second one is because you can't do that, you can't use json.pass to get it from string format back to function again. So you can't use any of the JSON methods to solve this. So I'm going to delete these logs to the console. So we need to find an alternative way of stringifying the function so that it can be stored in local storage. It can't be converted to JSON but we can convert it to a string still using the two string methods. So this is going to print the function as a string, not in JSON format, just as a pure string. So this is great because it's a string. We can store it in local storage, but how would we go from string back to a function when we're retrieving it from local storage? So for this, we can use a lesser known constructor object called the function constructor. So if you call it with the new operator before it, it will return a new instance of itself. And what it accepts here as arguments is the parameters that the function will take as a comma separated list, followed by the body of the function that it's going to create. So to reconstitute the string version of the function, as a proper function again, I'm going to need to get the parameters from it. And I'm also going to need to extract the body from it. So this bit of code here in string format. So let's first extract the body. So I'll create a new variable here called body. And I'm going to be wanting to get string data, a subset of it from the string version of the function. So I'll save a reference to that as f string. And here to get the body of f string, I'm going to call the substring method on it. So what you want to enter as the first value here is the index value of this first curly brace plus one, because if you use the actual index value, then it will also include the curly brace. So plus one. And as a second argument, the index value of the closing curly brace. So to get the first index value, you can call index of on f string. So in this case, it's the opening curly brace, and we're going to want that value plus one. And then as the second argument is going to be f string last index of, and that's going to be the closing curly brace. So I'll log back to the console so we can check that that has worked before proceeding to the next step. So if I refresh here, you can see that we've got the body as a string here, no opening curly brace, no closing curly brace, and we're getting an error here that params is not defined. That is because I have specified params within this new function call, but we haven't yet got the parameter values from the function. So let's do that now. So unfortunately, there's no inbuilt function you can call upon here to get the names of the parameters from the function. But what you can do is to use this library here, get parameter names. So it's very easy to use. To get started quickly, I'll paste the CDN link in the head of my document. And once I've done that, in subsequent scripts, I have available to me 
a function that is available in that library called get parameter names. And what you want to pass in there is the function that you want to extract the parameter names from. So that's going to be f in our case, not the stringified version of the function, but the actual function. And let's just check what the output was there. So it should be a and b. So we are getting those back in an array. Now you'll notice that even though it worked, we are getting an error here with module not defined from a script. So what I found was if you want to get rid of that, then what you can do is go to the URL of the script. Okay, and it's this bit at the end here that is causing the error. So if you just copy and paste the bit before it, you can just copy it directly into your script actually, and then you don't need the CDN link at all. So that line of code I pasted has exactly the same functionality as we had in the script. Now, if I refresh index, you see we're not getting the error anymore. So now we have the body of the string and we also have the parameters. So now we can actually use this new function constructor. So I'm going to spread the contents of that params array as the first argument. So this is effectively placing a comma b there and then followed by the body of the function. So I'll save the output here under a reference of f2 and I'll call the function passing in two values just to check it's working. So one plus two, the output should be three and it is. So we've successfully been able to stringify the original function and then convert it from string back to a proper function again using the new function constructor. Now to be able to pass the function through local storage, what you want to do is pass the body and the params into local storage and then retrieve these and use the new function constructor when retrieving the data. So I'm going to, on this other page, just copy and paste this code here. And here, what I'm going to do is pass the body of the function into local storage. So I'll save that under a key called body. And the value of that is going to be body. And I'm also going to pass params into there. So I'll create another item with a key of params. Now the params value is an array and an array can't be stored in local storage. It would be coerced to a string. But what we can do is store a JSON stringified version of that array and then use json.pass to convert it back into an array when we are retrieving it. So now if I refresh index and we take a look at what's in local storage. So the two items here, the body is a pure string and params is a JSON string version of the array. So we can now extract this on another page. So I'm going to call get items. So I want to get both the body and also the params and I'll store those in variables body and params. Now I don't have to make any changes here. I'm passing in params and body and I'll call this function f here instead of f2. The only thing you need to watch out for here is that this params value here, this is a JSON string. So what we actually want is the array again. So to go from JSON string to the array, just pass it through json.pass. So this should be working now. 
So the function we're calling here should run successfully on this next.html page. Even though we didn't define the function on this page, we defined it here in index.html and then passed it into local storage. So if we go to next, so you probably saw that I was initially getting an error here that was something to do with non-iterable. So that was probably because I didn't call json.pass till the end here. Now, once I've done that, it is iterable and the function is outputting the correct result. So this is how you can pass a function with parameters through local storage by stringifying it and getting its parameter values. And then at the other end, using the new function constructor to reconstitute it. So I hope you found this useful. If you did, please consider hitting the like button down below this video. It helps us with the algorithm and others to find this video. And if you'd like to see more content like this from us in the future, don't forget you can subscribe to the channel.